we're going to take a look at the difference between perfect and imperfect grafting, otherwise known as Kitchener Stitch. I prefer the term grafting because it explains better what you're actually trying to do. We're trying to invisibly join this piece of knitting to this piece of knitting. So this piece here was cast on at this edge and this is my actual knitting, is the pale blue knitting. And these are waist yarns at the top and the bottom. So this is the bound off edge. So these are the heads of the stitches. Now in the middle of a row of knitting you actually can't tell which way it was knit if I hit the sides. But by looking at the side you can see that that is an edge stitch. I can also tell here that that's a cast on edge and I can tell that's a bound off edge and that my V's, based on the location of the edge stitch, my V's are pointing up the fabric. So these are the heads of these stitches. It's quite important to be able to identify the direction of a piece of knitting and you do need to be able to see the sides to tell this. Now this piece here has been knit in the opposite direction. These are the heads of the stitches. This is the bound off piece of waist yarn. If I turn it round and look at the side, there is a full side stitch. If I looked at it the other way up, these side stitches are like the letter A, not like the letter V. So that's another way of telling that it's upside down. So that's the direction of knitting. And if I want to put these two pieces of fabric together, head to head, we can do a pretty good job, but it won't be perfect. So this is imperfect grafting. When the stitches come at each other head to head or feet to feet, it won't be perfect, but it'll be pretty good. And what we're putting in there is a needle inserted row of stitches. So I like to hold one of my pieces so that I can see the junction between the main and the waist yarn. And I'm not starting right at the very edge, but I can see this pretty clearly. So my pink yarn goes around here. For a lot more information on waist yarn grafting, see my Finesse 1 DVD. And then I do what I call the pinch test. And the blue stitch looks happy, and so does the stitch in the main fabric. Now on the opposite fabric, I'm looking to see where the waist yarn goes. And the waist yarn goes around here. So I'm duplicating the waist yarn. I'm using it as a guide for my sewing. And I'm pretty close to the edge so I'm not going to be more than half a column out of alignment. Then I like to tuck my two flaps down inside and you go back to where you came from and copy the path of the next piece of waist yarn. Go to the opposite side Go to the place I came out from, copy the next piece of waist yarn. And sew these stitches in place so that they form exactly the same size and shape as all of their cousins in the knitting. Normally you would be doing this in a matching colour. So you, I wanted you to see the sewn stitches. So we are actually threading in a needle inserted row of knit stitches and this counts as a row of knitting. And if I look at this carefully and cover the sides, I can see that the direction of my stitches doesn't change. It comes up and the Vs go over the shoulder line if that were a shoulder situation. I've just carried on sewing, as before, from one side to the other, until I've come out of half a side of a stitch at this edge. I still have half a stitch lift sticking out here, but there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm going to take my needle off and just go and finish off the other edge. And you can see that this looks like a perfectly ordinary row of knit stitches. At this edge I can take one more stitch here. I've gone around the base of that V and go back into that side stitch there. And that's all I can do. And if I roll it over you can see I've got half a stitch sticking out here. And if we look at the the piece as a whole. I've got half a stitch sticking out on top, 
half a stitch sticking out on the bottom and I have visible one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine and a half blue stitches. That's the best you can achieve when you're grafting stitches in opposing directions and this means cables and lace won't line up. Nothing you can do about it if the stitches are in opposing directions. Now I'm removing my waist yarn and before I remove it you can see that we've copied that waist yarn exactly with where we've sewn our grafted stitches and now I can remove this other piece of waist yarn. So the waist yarns are just there to hold the stitches whilst you graft. And this means even if you're right-handed or left-handed or your stitches are strange, anyone can graft using this method. And there is my imperfect graft. It doesn't look bad. The only place it's imperfect are at the sides. So if I hid that, no one would know that that was an imperfect graft. But patterns won't match, nothing will line up vertically because they're half a column out of alignment.